I thank God for where he has taken me. And a lot of the things that God has taken me from, I was in such a hurry to get away from them. But now, when I look back over my life, I am so thankful for the things that I had to experience because those are the things that God used in my life to bring me to where I'm at today. So can anybody look back over your life? Think back over your life when you think of all that the Lord has brought you from. When you look back at your past and look at your future and look at your present, your present does not look like your past in your future does not look like where you're going. So look back over your life. Look back over your life and look where you are now. Can you see where you're going? Can you see where you're going? Are you not in the wilderness anymore? Are you not stuck anymore? Are you not? Woo! Now you're going to destiny. You're walking in purpose. You're going to the land of the milk and honey. You're going to a place that has been prepared for you. Woo! That's how I feel about it right now. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. He's worthy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, God, I thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we adore you. Lord, we can't do it without you. I would like to give an honor to the angels of this house. The chain breakers of this house the ones the mentors of the house the said man and woman of God in their absence can we please honor our beloved Pastor Lawrence and the Shell peoples yes Lord I would like to give an honor to a very very special Someone, I'm 42 years of age, and I met this woman when we were just kids, teenagers, and it was truly, truly love at first sight. This year, we will be celebrating 23 years of marriage. Now what I know now, though, all the things that I caused my wife, all of the things that I've taken her through when I was not ready. I just thank God that she stood by my side. Because what I know now about how I was then, I said, baby, you should have left me. But she stayed. She stayed down for the cause. She stayed down for the call. She seen something in me that I didn't see in myself. And I'm just so grateful. So I would like to honor my beautiful wife, Chantella. I love you. Okay, we are standing. We'll go ahead and press right into the reading of the word. Today's reading in your hearing will come from Ephesians 6. We will start at the 10th verse. When you got it, please say amen. The whole armor of God. It begins at verse 10. Finally, my brethren... Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day in having done all that you can to stand. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness 
and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always. Praying always. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. And for me, that utterance may be given to me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, for which we are an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and most importantly, our doing the words. You may be seated in his presence. I thank God for my spiritual brothers and sisters that labor with me in the faith. I give an honor to you who are all present. I know a lot of people are traveling. Some people are out. Um, I pray traveling mercies over their safe return. The title of this sermon today is, Are You Defenseless? Are you defenseless? God is speaking. Will you listen? God has given us all the necessary tools to prepare for a time such as this. We are in a time of warfare. We as believers, as the children of God, as a people of God, as the saints of God, as followers of the way, have been given power to stand against the enemy, against the attacks, the wiles, the schemes, the trickery, the deceit, the division, the derision, the manipulation, the persuasion of the enemy. We have been given power to stand. We must defend the kingdom and ourselves. This brings me to point number one, spiritual strategy. God has given us some spiritual strategies to navigate our walk with him because the battle that we are fighting is fierce. It is a battle for our life, a battle for our freedom, a battle for peace in our mind, a battle to make provision for our family, a battle for transformation in our lives, a battle not to be changed. Can you help me out there, please? God has given us spiritual weapons to defend ourselves in this spiritual warfare that is going on right here right now. And some of us might not believe it that you are in a war whether you will admit it or not. You are in a war whether you believe it or not. You might be on the outside looking in, but we all are in a spiritual war right now. We need strategy to stand against the enemy and to advance God's kingdom. We need weapons to protect and persevere. Our walk must bear fruit so that it is evident that God is present. When we walk in with God, it has to bear fruit. And what does that fruit look like? Which this is not a part of what I was saying, but God dropped this in my spirit. When we think about a spiritual person, it's not about how many tongues you can speak. It's about you walking in the fruit of the spirit. So if you want to say somebody spiritual, how does they love walk look? How are they treating people with love? Do they have joy in their heart? When you see them, do they look like they have peace? Do you see them operating in goodness? Do you see them operating in kindness? Are they long suffering? Can they put up with other people's stuff and not just talk about them or try to push them away? That's walking in the spirit. That's a fruit bearing life. We want the weapons that we use in spiritual warfare to be effective. Therefore, we must be strategic and methodical. Not only are the lives of the believers under attack, some believers are asleep. Some believers have been rocked to sleep by the enemy. Tap, tap, are you asleep? Tap. Tap, or you sleep. Tap, tap, or you sleeping. Today, God is saying, wake up. Be 
ready because the enemy is coming. The enemy is on the move. Are you defenseless? I'm going to push that. So I wanted to be embedded and etched in our hearts and our minds. When we go throughout our day, our week, our month, our new year, that will be down in our spirit. Defenses mean that you are not ready to stand against the enemy. That you are not ready to stand against the onslaughts of the attacker, the avenger, the adversary. So when he hits you, when he comes in to overtake you, overstand you, overrun you, override you, you are not prepared to fight. Are you defenseless? Defenseless is a spiritual meaning, meaning that you are endangered. You have been exposed. You are in the line of fire. Your hands have been tied. You are unprepared, unquipped, unguarded, unprotected. You are inferior. You are weak. You are wide open. You are lost and you are wretched. You are wandering in the wilderness. Did I step on somebody's toes? Did I sit on somebody's couch? Did I pull up in somebody's driveway? Did I read somebody's email? Or are you defenseless? We are talking about spiritual defenses. We need balance in our lives. This is a spiritual strategy. We need balance. We can't be sharp and effective in one area and not put any effort in another area. So as a minister, when I listen to people as they pour out their heart and as they share their life, and you all can attest to the same, you don't have to be a minister. When somebody tells you that their face is something, and when you really, really listen to them, there is some type of imbalance in their life. When you're walking with God, you have to balance yourself. Even though God must be the center and the source of everything that you do, you still have to spend area, uh, time in other areas of your life. Amen? So God expects balance from us. There are times when we need to be on defense, but not all the time. There are times when we need to take an offensive stance. There are times when we need to take a preemptive position. We are good at defending ourselves, but we really, really struggle when it's time to take that offensive stance. Do, do we have anybody that loves the game of football? Can I get a show of hands? Anybody that loves a game of basketball? Does anybody, can I get a show of hands? Who all likes sports of any sort, of any kind? Amen. That's good. So look at this. Spiritual warfare is about standing our ground against the enemy and taking new ground for the kingdom. When you stand your ground, you in defense. But when you take a new ground, you're not coming back. You're pushing forward. When you take a new ground, it's an offensive position. Amen? Spiritual warfare. Warfare is conflict between competitors that is vicious and unrelenting. We have to know when we are being attacked to put up our defense. We have to know when we are being pushed back. We have to know when to push back so we can take our offensive position. We have to stay on guard. This is our preemptive position. In sports, we have competitors. In the game of football, I'm going to use it. I'm going to push real quick. You know, you got two opponents. They take the field. One opponent is on the offensive end. The other opponent is on the defensive side. And the opponent that's the offense, it is their goal to move forward to score, no matter what type of sport we're in. Even if it's boxing, you want to throw a punch. That's offense. And the defense, what we want to do is, if you're playing defense, then you want to stop the opponent from moving forward. You want to stop the opponent from advancing. Amen? But the preemptive side of that it is, is that in the field of play, the preemptiveness is not going on on the field. It's in the preparation. Amen? The enemy always has us on the run. When, you are going, when are we going to put the enemy on the run? 
When are we going to push back? When are we going to fight back? You know when you're on the run, you are stuck. When you're running, you are giving up ground. You have to take back your power from the enemy. One of the greatest attacks of the enemy is relationships. I believe relationships of any sort, of any kind, is one of the most talked about, unaddressed issues that we face, not just in church, but in life. And I'm going to just tap on the men for a quick second. Men, we have to understand that one of the main parts of strategy is understanding who you are in your home. As men, we must be the king, the priest, and the prophet. We are the one who protects and provides. We are the one who prays and give direction. We are the one who sees and we lead as the king, the priest, and the prophet. I can dive into that, but I'm going to stay right there on the surface. So men, as men, we have to take our position. If you are on your post, the devil will have to put up a fight. If you are in position, the devil will have to put up a fight. If you are standing your ground, the enemy is coming, but he will have to put up a fight. But if you are out of position, the enemy will just walk right in. If you're not in position, the enemy will just walk right in and attack and attack and attack. This brings me to spiritual strategy number two, discipline. Before I press on to that, as, as, uh, as fathers, I, I'm a father and I have seven children, giving God the glory. And all of my children have different personalities. And I have to deal with each and every one of them different. Because in my son, I got one son and six girls. My son is a mama's boy. Okay? And if I come at my son aggressively, then he's going to uh, buckle up and shut. He's six foot two and a mama's boy. But if I come at him aggressively, then he's going to, like, shy away. And as the goal, this, this is the point I'm trying to make. When you are a parent or a father, no matter who you are or what type of conversation you're in, when I'm talking to somebody, it's about my ability to communicate and connect. Because it is more important for them to receive what I'm saying versus me saying what I'm saying. I know what I want to say, but can they receive what I say? Can they understand what I say? And you, when you ask them, do you understand what I'm saying? That's not enough. They got to go and show you. And I had to balance myself to know how to address my kids. I had to study my kids. I had to, there was a deep study because I got seven. But I had to learn my kids. And I'm going to tell you, it was a time in my life where I felt defenseless. Because at the age of 21, can I get a show of hands of all the people who are 21 years of age or younger? Please raise your hand. Now listen to this here. Thank you. When I was 21, I had five children. Five children at the age of 21, five, let that soak in, children at the age of 21 with no help, no support system, no nothing. But I had to handle my business. But guess what? I was defenseless because I took matters into my own hand. Amen. And giving God the glory, I can stand here today and, and I have six girls and I'm not going to dive into this. Five of my, six of my children are dating because I started young. I got a 25-year-old, a 23-year-old, two 22-year-olds, a 21-year-old, a 19-year-old, and a 10-year-old. Six of my children are dating. I have to be involved and engaged in all those relationships. But look at this here. And I thank God for this here because I'm, this is where I really thank my wife at because it's something she understood that I didn't. Because of the constant communication and the constant involvement, and I'm not knocking anybody else, I'm just sharing with you my testimony. I'm not a grandfather yet. I got three kids that are going to college. Amen? I give God the glory for that. But when I tried to do things in my own might, in my own spirit, I failed. I was failing as a father. 
I failed because I took matters into my own hand until an outside force stepped into my life to redirect me, to show me that this is not the way. Amen? Okay, warfare is conflict between competitors that can be vicious and unrelenting. When we are up against the enemy, we must remain disciplined. Discipline is training to act in accordance with rules, accustomed to systematic and regular action. Discipline is submissiveness to order and control. Discipline is habit and obedience. Discipline must be foundational in our walk with God. What are some things that we should do repeatedly and repetitively? Daily prayer. Start and end your day in prayer because this prepares you. Daily interaction. Touch God through his word. This builds you. When you got a relationship with God, these are things that are cohesive that you must do at all times and not every other day. These must be done daily. That's why when Jesus prayed, he said, give us this day our daily bread. Daily worship. God loves to be worshipped. It brings you closer to God. Amen? We know these things. We know that we need to pray. We know that we need to worship, but we sit back. Are you defenseless? Why do we wait until we are weak to go to God to draw strength? Why do we wait until our backs are against the wall to go to God to pull us out? Why do we wait until we are under attack to go to God for protection? Why do we wait until we have broken, been broken between seemingly impossible repair to go to God to be healed? Why do we sit back and wait to call on the name of the Lord? This brings me to point number two, spiritual weapons. Apostle Paul left us a guide in the book of Ephesians for us. It is clear instruction that we will face the enemy. We will face the adversary, the chief complainer, the accuser of the brethren, the destroyer, the devil, Satan, whomever you want to call him. We will face the enemy. We have to be able to operate these weapons in the spiritual realm. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. But powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness in high places. A lot of the times when we are fighting against the enemy, remember, we are not fighting against flesh and blood. But we try to fight a spiritual fight in the natural realm. We try to start a fight that's already started. We try to protect ourselves in the natural aspect. And we are losing ground. We are getting pushed back and we don't know why. The enemy is coming. What is the enemy after of today in your marriage? What area in your life that you're being challenged in? What area in your life that has been weakened and opened up? The enemy is coming after your marriage. The enemy is coming after your children. The enemy is coming after your finances. The enemy is coming after your health. The enemy is coming after your destiny. The enemy is coming after your legacy. The enemy is coming after it all. He wants it all. He came to steal, kill, and destroy. The flesh gives way to the flesh. The spirit gives way to the spirit. When we are in the flesh and we deal with people, and if I deal with somebody out of the flesh, if I say to Dominique, hey, man, you tripping. Instead of saying, how you doing? How you doing is in love. That's the spirit way of saying you tripping. But if I say you tripping, when he responds back, he going to respond back to me in his flesh. The flesh give way to the fresh. But if I say, hey, brother, how you doing? I know something going on. I'm not saying this here. How you doing? I open the floor up. But how you doing is an act of love. That's spiritual. I'm not attacking him. I'm not putting him in a position. But I'm asking him, how you doing? So we have to deal with people accordingly. We can't mishandle people, mistreat people, because people... Hearts are precious. We never know what people have been facing throughout their day, throughout their week. We don't know what people are up against. So when we deal with people, we must be cautious. When you handle glasses, say caution. Handle with care. When you're dealing with people, you must be cautious and handle them with care. You cannot be lukewarm when you're walking with God. 
You cannot be in between. You cannot be in the gray area. You have to cross over to this side. Your flesh have to submit to the spirit. In Luke 4 and 18, it says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me as anointed me. The thing about when God's spirit or anointing moves on you, God's spirit can come upon you. He can put his hand on you. His presence is on you. He can do that with any one of us. But he can't anoint us all unless we do this here. And God, this is my spirit. The spirit, you have to submit. When you submit, the anointing comes upon you. To preach that gospel to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, recover sight to the blind, set at liberty those who have been bruised. When you submit to the spirit of God, then the anointing of God can move through you because it is the anointing that destroys the yokes. So when we want God to move, when we want to see the spirit of God, we have to be willing to submit. Amen? If you try to operate in the both, then it's going to be tragic. Because we try to do that all the time. If I say, what's up? He say, what you mean? How you, then I come back and say, how you doing? I try to do both at the same time. It's going to be tragic if we try to do both at the same time. These are our spiritual weapons. The belt of truth. There is power in the belt of truth. The belt of truth is put on to hold up everything everything is in place and this is where the power of the holy spirit comes in at because the holy spirit is there to guard everything so when you put on your belt of truth around your waist that's where you get your power at. the breastplate of righteousness when you and i are not living right when we are not striving when we are vulnerable we need this breastplate of righteousness on because our hearts are opened up for attack we have to guard our hearts, and we have to pray that God take out of us a heart of stone and give us a heart of flesh. We need that breastplate of righteousness. Amen. We have to watch our lifestyle. We have to walk and strive to live in holiness and in righteousness and in right standing with God. We need that breastplate of righteousness. The shoes of the gospel will lead us where the Lord is taking us, and it takes obedience to the spirit to be led to the spirit. It goes against our desires. When Jesus said, come, follow me. When we are obedient, we'll follow the Lord. The helmet of salvation, your mind is fixed on God and his word. And it goes against unbelief. So we need the helmet of salvation to renew our mind, to give us peace in our mind. The sword of the spirit, you have to lay your hands on the sword. This is the sword of the spirit right here. Put your hands on this daily. You have to contact this daily. You have to know when to use this daily. Amen. This is the word of the spirit, the word of God. Prayer will give us more than what we call can ask for. Prayer is the most powerful thing as any child of God, as a believer. One of the most powerful tools that is the most unused tool. In our spiritual walk, we have to pray daily. This is where we draw our strength from. This is where we're built up in God. This is where we find our identity in God. This is where we spend that quality time with God. This is where we sit at in God. This is where we lay things at the feet of God. We have to pray and do it daily. Then we have to go before God and pray address properly, meaning we have to confess our sins. We have to confess our faults. We can't just go to God and asking God for things. We first have to say, Lord, please forgive me while I have sinned. Lord, please forgive me, God, for any un uh, habitual sin, premeditated sin, unrepentant sin. Now you're getting yourself ready to go before the holy God. Now you can go to God and say, Lord, I just want to adore you before I ask for anything. I just want to call on the name of Jesus before I ask for anything. I just want to lift you up before I call for anything. I just want to let you know that you are a mighty God. You are an awesome God. You are a wise God. You are a living God and you are a true God. Don't just go in and ask for something. We got to walk our way in. As believers, we walk by faith and not by sight. Therefore, the weapons of spiritual warfare, they must be known. They must be recognized and they must be 
stood. Once we know our weapons, our defense, once we recognize our defense, once we understand our defense, then we take a stand against the enemy. These weapons must be used when necessary. In order to possess spiritual weapons, you have to be in covenant with God. You have to be in right standing with God. You have to make sure that you're praying. You have to make sure that you're fasting. You have to make sure that you're watching your lifestyle. I know this is familiar, but we have to make sure that we're doing these things that are required to do repeatedly and repetitively. The Holy Spirit is a weapon. The Holy Spirit will carry you. He will walk with you, talk with you. He will comfort you. He is your advantage. He will guide you. He will instruct you. He will stand for you. He will be with you. He is sovereign. He is love. He is peace. He is whatever you need him to be. He is a healer. He is deliverance. He brings things back to remembrance. He sets you free from hurt. He sets you free from pain. He sets you free from breakthroughs. He prepares you for where you're going. The Holy Spirit is whatever you need. He's there to help you. He is a paracletus. When you heard that little voice say somebody said something, that was the Holy Ghost that was talking to we have to learn to listen to the Holy Spirit. We have to follow the Holy Spirit. We have to call on the Holy Spirit. We have to seek on the Holy Spirit. We don't have to always go to God for everything because he already left us a helper. He already left the beneficiary. We have to know that we have the Holy Spirit. We have to pull on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will give you power to stand. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. The Holy Spirit will give you an understanding of the times, what to say, when how to do it. This is all found in the Holy Spirit. So we need to take advantage of this weapon. We need to look at Holy Spirit as a weapon. We need to look at the Holy Spirit as an ability. The Holy Spirit is a resource. The Holy Spirit can stretch your capacity. Whatever you want, the Holy Spirit will give you the desires of his heart. I can keep telling you about the Holy Spirit, but he wants to fill you. He wants to pour out on you. He wants to be a part of you. He wants to be one with you. All of this is in the Holy Spirit. So can we learn to pull on that Holy Spirit? Can we learn to pull on that Holy Spirit at the midnight hour? When we go to that altar sometimes, just have a talk with the Holy Spirit. Say, Holy Spirit, wrap me up. Holy Spirit, put your hand on me. Holy Spirit, I need to be touched. Holy Spirit, I lost my way, but I know you can read the Holy Spirit, I don't know what to move, but I'm going to be style silent to your voice. Holy Spirit, I'm here. It's me again. I'm standing in the need of prayer. I'm standing in the need of what I'm going through. I'm standing in the need. I'm about to lose my mind. But Holy Spirit, I know you're going to give me peace. I know you will never leave me nor forsake me. The Holy Spirit is whatever you need him to be. He's a friend that stick closer than a brother. The Holy Spirit will stand up against the adverse adversary, the attacker, the avenger. The Holy Spirit will stand up against and do your need him to stand. Do you need the Holy Spirit to stand up for you? All you got to say, Holy Spirit, I need you. Holy Spirit, hold me. Holy Spirit, be with me. Be one with me. I can't do this by myself. I know you said in the beginning was the Word, but you was there too, Holy Spirit. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your Word. I thank you, Lord. Now that I can stand, Lord, I know I'm going to go, but Holy Spirit, you stay with me as you go where you want me to go. Holy Spirit, Sweet Holy Spirit, sovereign Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is dwelling with you. He's living in you. He inhabits you. This is all found in the Holy Spirit. Oh, I need him to be a part of me. Oh, Holy Spirit. He walks with me. He talks with me. Can you talk to him like that? Don't say it is he. Oh, he's right there. Oh, you don't have to go far. He's right there. He's on the inside. He's right there. You don't have to look far. You don't have to go picking up the phone, calling somebody. You don't have to get on the email. He's right there on the inside. All you got to do is get in a silent place and be still. All you got to do is find yourself in a place and be quiet. Holy Spirit, show me the way. Show me what I'm doing wrong so I can get this right. Show me how I'm off course so I can redirect my life. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit forgive me for not taking advantage of you, for not calling on you. I knew you were there, but I didn't think about it, Lord. But now that I know that I know, I'm going to call on you a little bit more. I'm going to pour on you a little bit more. I need you to pour out on me. I need you to fill me up. Holy Spirit, fill me up till I overflow. Holy Spirit, fill me up. I don't want to be the same again. Holy Spirit, forgive me and teach me how to forgive myself. Holy Spirit, show me how to reach back in the past for things that I'm holding on to. Holy Spirit, 
Spirit, show me how to reach back into the now, Lord. Holy Spirit, have your way. Holy Spirit, I can't do it without you. Whatever you do, Holy Spirit, don't do it without me. Whatever you're doing, Holy Spirit, hold me. Holy Spirit, please forgive my disobedience. Show me how to be obedient. Show me how to be faithful. Show me how to walk in love. Show me if I've been handling people wrong. Show me if I've been mishandling. I need to go back and apologize. Holy Spirit, I need to get this right. Teach me how to be kind to people. Teach me how to be understanding. Teach me how to be humble. I've been full of pride, Holy Spirit. I've been stubborn, Holy Spirit. But teach me, Lord. Teach me how to humble myself. In the presence of the Lord, teach me, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, touch my children. I need you to get a hold of them. Shake them every which way but loose. Put your hand on them. Lord, they shall be what you call them to be. Holy Spirit, put your hand on my children. Holy Spirit, they shall be what you said they shall be. Thank you that this is the hour of visitation, that they're dreaming again, that they have vision again, that they know that they're going somewhere, and that they know they're not alone. When their friends put pressure on them, they say, Holy Holy Spirit, get rid of that bully that's trying to take advantage of me. Holy Spirit, touch my husband. Get him right, Lord. Lord, he's off the playing field. Lord, get a hold of him. Show him what he needs to do. Show him that it's too hard. Teach him how to soften up. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Only you can do it. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Teach me how to be disciplined. Teach me how to stand. I've been running all my life. I'm ready to stand up for myself. People been pushing me back. People been taking advantage of me. And I don't want to do it boldly, but I want to do it right. Teach me how to stand up. Teach me how to put my arm on. Teach me how to put on my helmet so I can stand. Teach me how to swing my sword in the spirit. Teach me how to put on my breastplate of righteous. Teach me how to run with the shoes of gospel on my feet. Holy Spirit, teach me how to raise up my shield of faith to raise up a standard. Holy Spirit, teach me how to live your word. Show me that your word can come alive in me. Holy Spirit, when I look in your word, show me myself. Holy Spirit, when I speak, let me speak with the believer's authority. Holy Spirit, when I walk, show me what it's like to walk by faith. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, let me confess my faith. When I see myself in the world, let me speak that word. Oh, the Lord is tragic shepherd, he shall not want. He makes tragic lie down in green pastures. He'll teach you how to confess your faith. See yourself in that word. See your condition in that word. See your condition. So when you're swaying, you got a defense. You're not going to always be on defense. Holy Spirit, teach me how to position myself. Teach me when to be on defense. Teach me when to be on offense. Teach me when to be preempted. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I can't do it without you. Holy Spirit, it's power in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will change your life. The Holy Spirit will transform your life. Change is not enough. Holy Spirit. Whoo, I need that to stand with me. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. We're going to call on you. Holy Spirit. Thank you. Woo, while you're standing, look at your neighbor and tell him, I am standing. Oh, look at your neighbor and tell him, I am standing. Look at yourself and tell yourself, I am standing. Oh, now we have our strategy. Now that we're equipped, it's time to stand. It's time to take your position. It's time. You are ready. You have been equipped. You are now prepared. You are now ready to stand. You are ready to take your position. You are ready to stand. No more fear. No more guilt. No more condemnation. No more helplessness. No more hopelessness. Holy Spirit, no more giving up, giving in, giving out, or giving over. No more. Do not give up. Do not give in. Do not give over. No more. No more. No more. No more. Do not give up. Do not give in. Do not give out. Do not give over. No more. You shall stand. You shall stand. You are spiritual warriors. You are no longer defenseless. You are no longer unprepared. We are covered.
by the power of the blood. I know it was the blood. It was victory in the blood. Oh, he died. He was buried. But it did not stop there. Rise up. He got up. No longer will you stay down in that failure. You will not stay in that mistake. You're going to get up. I am standing. Now that I have my helmet on, woo! You are standing now that you got your breastplate of righteousness on. You are standing now that you have raised up your shield of faith. Every fiery dart that is thrown your way, you can now raise up a standard against the enemy. You are standing. Now that you swing it, your sword in the spirit when the enemy comes, get back. Get out of my house. Get off my job. Get back. Get out of here. You are standing. Get back. Sword. Sword. Don't sit him. Swing it. Don't put it down. Swing it. Don't lay it down. Use it. Sword. Use it. It's a weapon. Don't hold it. Don't hide it. Let them know I got a sword. I am standing. I can slay giants. I can slay my past. I can slay that mistake. I can speak. Peace be still. You can speak to a thing and it shall be so. Peace be still. You can go into the middle of a storm and say, Peace be still. Sometimes when you get in the storm, Say peace, be still. God will not calm that storm down. But he'll in the middle of the storm, he'll give you peace in the middle of a storm. Do anybody know him like that? Do anybody know him like that? Go ahead, stand to your feet. Go ahead and stand to your feet, please. As we get ready to close out. Oh, God. Hey, I am standing. Oh, God. I am standing. I'm closing out 2018. I laid aside every weight. And I'm going in to 2019. But when I go in, I'm going in standing tall. When I go in, I'm going in walking tall. When I go in, I'm going in all in. I am standing, saying, confessing, speaking to the atmosphere. I and standing, speaking into the atmosphere. I know I got to let some things go. I'm going to put them behind me. I am standing. I am standing. Let 18 go. Cast it out. Release it. Throw it out. Because it can't go. It can't go. It's no room. It's a tight fit. I'm ready for 2019.